I have clicked on the Global Tropical Overview for May the 1st, 2024. As is always the case in these videos, I will express your mind alone and in making decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look to their local office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. So we have one system active across the tropics today after a fairly long streak of inactivity across the tropics uh, from, say, mid-April to now. Uh, but we do have a storm formed now. You can see Tropical Cyclone Hedea is a name here. I hope I'm saying that correctly from Mateo, France. And uh, it's spinning away here well northwest of Madagascar. The tip of the island is right there where I'm marking it on your map. And uh, it's pretty far north right now. This is 9 degrees south of latitude. And it even looks a little bit north of there, maybe around 8.7 degrees south. And it's likely not going to get too much more south than this before it begins to move back towards the north as uh, we're looking towards a landfall here in maybe Tasmania or Kenya in Africa as we go through the next several days. But right now the system is looking fairly healthy. You can see it has a well-defined circulation at the center, which or at the surface rather, which was confirmed earlier uh, this morning by uh, ASCAT. You can see the well-defined circulation here, and uh, the convection looks uh, pretty well organized as well. So with those, it meets the definition of a tropical cyclone. Now it does look a little bit sheer. If we look at water vapor imagery, uh, if I can go to that tab, you can see uh, if you look at some of the thunderstorms in the north uh, northeast of uh, the center, which is right about there you can see their tops getting sheared off towards the south and west. And this is likely one issue for the storm right now and why the thunderstorms are not fully covering the center. But another issue is, and this is going to be the main issue for the storm as it goes uh, right towards landfall, is all this dry air back west over Africa. You can see some of it possibly getting entrained already into this. We sort of have this little dry notch here on the eastern end of the center. And uh, as the system, especially as it gets right towards landfall, uh, here it's going to really be a big issue for the storm and it's likely going to keep it down in terms of intensity now there may be a small window where it could maybe try to go for cyclone intensity uh, especially if it does manage to get some of these convective bursts fully wrapped around and covering the low level center uh, but as we get towards landfall we're not expecting the system to be too strong it's likely to weaken as it does so likely one reason because of that uh, dry air uh, but you can see right now what's steering it uh, back towards the north and west. We have this area of high pressure here over South Africa, and uh, this is just forcing the system back towards the northwest. We had some models last week trying to paint a picture of maybe it could get towards Madagascar if this trough maybe hang, hung back a little bit, but that does not happen in this case, and this ridge has become uh, strong enough that this is going to just force the system and not allow it to come uh, south. It's, gonna, it's just going to force it back towards the north and west. Uh, this is the mid-level relative humidity plot from the GFS, and you can see once again the issue that I pointed out of all this dry air here uh, moving right into the center. You can see this system with its winds on the north side, which would be moving clockwise, it would be pulling in the air uh, like this and you can see where the dry air may be in train you can see this little area of uh, lighter greens more towards whites this might be where that dry air is in training itself and uh, if you look at a profile here of the temperature and moisture uh, north of the storm at that time of the model you can see that there's a significant dry layer in the mid levels of the troposphere you can see the mean here which is from 850 millibars which is here to 300 millibars it's 58%, and we've got a significant dry layer, particularly uh, around, say, 500 to 550 millibars, where you have a big separation in the dew point and the temperature lines here, indicating a very dry layer there. And uh, when that goes into the storm, what it does is it collapses some of the thunderstorms around the center, and it can make it more difficult for the storm to sustain the deep convection that is necessary for the storm to maintain intensity or intensify. And uh, that's likely why models are showing this all weakening. You can see that here as well in the Mateo France forecast, showing a brief severe tropical cyclone phase, but it begins to weaken as it comes towards the coastline of Tasmania, weakening to a tropical depression and then a remnant low as it then moves inland. And once it moves inland, it will likely dissipate pretty quickly. And this will uh, be the last that we hear of today for uh, who knows how long. I don't know if these names get reused in the southwestern Ocean, uh, but 
won't be an issue anymore once it makes landfall but we could still have some increased rainfall you can see it does bring some moisture in uh, on the south side it's going to be pushing all the the tropical moisture with that band of thunderstorms that you saw on satellite and that will likely bring some increased rainfall to this part of the uh, African coastline and this could lead to maybe some isolated flood issues especially if you get a training band of uh, thunderstorms on that south side uh, but in terms of where we are right now in terms of say cyclone season in the southwest Indian Ocean and really across the entire southern hemisphere we're now into the late season in the southwest Indian Ocean we've been in late season really since April but we're now into the very late season I'd say I believe the Southwest Indian Ocean cyclone season goes until May 15th, but I, I believe as well the South Pacific and Australian region cyclone season has technically ended. I believe it goes from November 1st to May 1st. I may be wrong on that, maybe may extended up to May 15th as well. But point being that we're in this transitionary period now between the Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere cyclone season to, towards the Northern Hemisphere tropical cyclone seasons in the Atlantic East Pacific, West Pacific, and North Indian Ocean. And uh, this is usually the time of year where we start to look at, say, the East Pacific and the Atlantic for maybe some early or pre-season activity uh, in those regions. And we also look towards the North Indian Ocean and West Pacific as well. We really look across the entire board in terms of the Northern Hemisphere. Well, let's start from West to East. Let's talk about the Indian Ocean and the West Pacific first. Now, right now, what helped uh, Hedea form is a uh, MJO pulse, uh, that being an area of rising air that moves east th uh, progressively throughout the world uh, th throughout the time of year. And uh, you can see right now it's in a favorable phase for the Indian Ocean. It's in region three. That's why Hedea has formed. It's going to be moving into Mer this region here, regions three and five, or sorry, four and five, uh, if I can actually read these numbers. Uh, but it's moving into uh, this area here which is on the map, Australia, the Indian Ocean, uh, West Pacific, Philippines, Indonesia, around that area of the world. And uh, this may favor some activity as we go into, say, mid-May across the Australian region and West Pacific. Uh, one reason being is that when you get a lot of the rising air across this region, you tend to get a lot of air rushing into that because you have a lot of lower pressure. So say here where the air is rising right now, it's going to eventually be now sinking uh, because all the thunderstorms have left that area. Now that say the thunderstorm activity is over here. Well, now you've got all this high pressure because of the lack in convection. And now you've got all this low pressure here over in Indonesia. And what's going to happen is all this higher pressure is going to rush in to this area of low pressure, try and equalize it. And as it does so, because we have all that rising air, we're going to get a lot of thunderstorms developing with the MJO pulse. And uh, this is a very common source of tropical activity anywhere really across the world. Now, you can see in this plot that, I, that you see flashing in the background, this is the zonal or horizontal wind anomaly uh, over uh, the next couple of weeks into mid-May. And you can see this red region here across Indonesia. This is anomalous westerly winds or winds coming from the west uh, across this entire area. And I've talked about this several times before, but this is a very favorable sign for tropical activity. The reason being is that you get a lot of that westerly wind like I talked about along the equator. But further north and south of the equator, you have easterly winds as a natural part of the trade winds that are ongoing really all around the tropics just north of the equator and south of the equator as well and uh, where these two flows meet you can get cyclonic spin which is counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere clockwise in the southern hemisphere and that allows if the environment is favorable an area of low pressure to spin up and could allow a tropical cyclone to develop now we've had some trends on the gfs towards a weaker mjo you can see that right now this isn't a very strong pulse overall and if the mjo is weaker we get a weaker westerly wind burst because you don't have nearly as much rising air you get can get less convection that way and that could also maybe play a role into the tropical cyclone aspect of this could that tropical cycle potential now be decreased now the gfs from what i've seen has remained fairly consistent on a storm 
uh, in the West Pacific, and I believe it's also been a little bit consistent on something in the Australian region as well. And uh, it's something to watch here in this part of the world. It's also something to watch in the Indian Ocean. You can see where we get some increased trades in the purple here, which is easterly winds relative to normal. And we could, with this westerly wind burst on the western end of that, could maybe get something developing in the Indian Ocean as well. So really, in terms of, say, the next two weeks, let's say we'll watch this area across the world for potential tropical development. Now, usually what happens with the MJO is it will progress east and uh, we'll begin to see maybe some potential of development here in the East Pacific and Atlantic as we go into those hurricane seasons. Now, right now, the models have been going a little bit all over the place in terms of intensity on exactly how strong it's going to be. Is it actually going to make it to the East Pacific in a strong phase? Right now, the trend is on models that it will uh, likely weaken here a after it passes through, say, the Indonesia region, in West Pacific and Australian region. You can see that here in the GFS plot, showing it just huddling up here in this center part, which indicates a weaker MJO pulse uh, in this uh, on this plot. And uh, this would maybe be an issue for tropical development in the East Pacific and Atlantic, as uh, the MJO, especially in the early season, is a good kickstarter to tropical activity across these parts of the world. It's not the only thing that can cause tropical development. You can get tropical cyclones without the MJO, but it, it does help kick off hurricane season in these two areas. And if it does stay weaker, it could maybe push off some start of tropical activity in, in, in the East Pacific and Atlantic uh, as we go into those hurricane seasons. But of course, this is a month out. This is It's May 1st, and this map goes out to May 31st. And you can see this is the ensemble plot. All these yellow lines are showing some uncertainty for the MJO. So while the mean track or the, well, the forecast right now from the GFS is like this, could it go something more like this? It's possible. And uh, it's something to watch for as we go over the next uh, few weeks, especially into mid to late May for tropical development in the East Pacific and uh, North Atlantic. Now, putting everything together, this is what the Climate Prediction Center uh, says on their tropical outlook for the next three weeks. You can see in week two, which is May 8th to May 14th, they're highlighting the Australian region with that westerly wind burst that we talked about over Indonesia for potential development. But like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe something tries to form in the West Pacific and maybe we'll have to watch the uh, North Indian Ocean as well. And then as we go into mid to late month, week three, May 15th to May 20 21st, you can see an area highlighted here in the East Pacific. And the uh, We'll have to pay attention to that as uh, we are looking again towards hurricane season now in the East Pacific and Atlantic. Now, regardless of if anything forms, you know, in the next month in these two basins uh, here, one important thing is it's May 1st and we are now 15, I think it's 14 days now away from Pacific hurricane season and we're a month away from Atlantic hurricane season. And now is an excellent time to review your hurricane plan and make sure you're ready for any hurricane that may come towards your area. Hurricane Preparedness Week is next week, May 5th, uh, May 5th to May 11th. And during this week, the National Hurricane Center will be posting stuff on Twitter, on Facebook, and uh, I imagine they'll have stuff on uh, their website as well for how you can prepare for hurricane season, what you should have in your preparedness kit, and uh, what you can do to best prepare yourself just in case a hurricane comes through your area. Like I talked about in my Atlantic hurricane season forecast last year, this year in the Atlantic may be very active, and it's best to get yourself prepared just in case a hurricane does come your way so that you're not rushing when a hurricane is coming your way in time that can be better spent evacuating away to a safe area ahead of a hurricane. That's all that I've got for today. I'll have a updated hurricane season forecast in the next couple of weeks, but I'll also have usual videos if we have any tropical trouble to talk about. I may have one more video on Tropical Cyclone Hidea uh, before it makes landfall. But thank you all for watching. I know this was a little bit of a longer one, but we got to get the discussion in of hurricane season as it's very important to be prepared uh, as we go into uh, the summer and fall months. But that's all that I've got for today. Thanks for watching.